What's up guys, Karu here, back to LA. Um, with the video you guys are about to watch, right there. It's our final practice in Australia before playing Medvedev. Fortunately, it wasn't a great scoreline, but we had a fun practice on Rod Laver Arena, my favorite court in the world. I've hit, I've been lucky to hit in a lot of courts and Rod Laver Arena is the best one. So this is the entire practice that cut some of the, the fluff out, but it's the entire practice the day before he played Daniil. So make sure you turn the volume up uh, so you hear when I come in to explain some of the things that we're doing. But without further ado, let's watch this practice. All right, so here we're just hitting obviously down the middle. We, we did a little mini tennis. Again, I we like doing mini tennis. There are some people who don't for a red, whatever reason. Uh, we, we always like to do a little mini tennis, just get, and get, get the feet going, brush the ball a little bit, get the, the rack ahead speed. So right here we just have like a nice, nice long rally. So basically, it's, you know, obviously hitting down the middle at this level isn't necessarily that important. I think a big reason of why we do it um, and we spend a little more time on it especially playing on a on a center court like this is to get a feel for how the court plays um, center courts tend to play different than all the outside courts so the guys who do play in center courts more often do get have a little bit of an advantage on that because they do play have just have more experience playing on those courts We actually didn't get to play outside a lot because we were playing on Rod Laver, so we got practice time there. Um, but after after losing and training on other courts, we definitely got to feel that Rod Laver was playing a tiny, tiny bit slower than everywhere else. So if you're playing, if you're moving from outside, from the outside courts to the to the stadium courts, there's the tendency is for the ball to be uh, the court to be a little bit slower. And after a good amount of rallies here through the middle, um, we, I tend to usually just give Marcos the green light to, you know, whenever he sees a ball that he see, he deems appropriate to just put it away, not feel like he needs to, you know, hit a million balls through the middle because again, not really realistic to what he's gonna do in a match, just like that. What's up guys, Karu here from back from California. Are you guys enjoying this video so far? There's some pretty clean hitting, huh? And I know you wanna hit some clean shots like that as well, but in my experience as a coach, I've noticed three major mistakes that are sabotaging you, that it's not allowing you to hit clean shots like we're doing in this video. So I created a free guide that will help you fix those mistakes fast. Just go to top3mistakes.com. That's top3mistakes.com, it's free. Why not do it? Link will be in the description top 3 mistakescom and let's go back to the video. Right here again, we're just hitting a few more down the middle, just switching sides, getting a good look at the stadium from both sides. But um, you see that right, right about now, we start moving the ball around the court a bit. We go from hitting just down the middle to kind of hitting anywhere on the court, keeping the rally alive, not trying to put the ball away, but keeping the rally alive um, and just moving the ball around a bit. So now you see I shifted to the forehand side 
and I'm moving Marcos around the court. So I, I'm not going to try to put any balls away, but I'm going to try to move him around and he, he's just going to have a target to the forehand corner. It's just a good way to, again, keep rallies alive, but being a bit more realistic about where he's going to hit. This way he's going to train his target to a forehand side, right? We have pretty much three targets to the forehand, to the middle, to the back end. And here he can, you know, move, move around, get the heart rate up a bit. Uh, and try to hit this target to the forehand side. Pretty good rally there. I wasn't even moving, I got back. And you see there, mistakes happen, you know, even at this level, I think we're so used to the highlights, but mistakes do happen. We try to keep the rally alive, keep the ball alive. You know, again, don't don't take mistakes that seriously. We see that ball was out, a totally fine ball. Uh, but it happens and we just gotta keep the rally alive, keep the feet going. Switch to the back end side now. As you see, I am trying to hit the ball really flat on my back end. I already hit it decently flat, but not the new flat. But I'm trying to give him more of a the new look on his back end. Obviously, didn't do that amazing of a job. The same thing, just trying to keep it moving. That was pretty flat. Ooh. So what we're about to see here is we like to do like scenarios that are typically typically going to happen in the match, you know, knowing our opponents and kind of their tendencies. Uh, for example, the new has a great forehand cross court when you attack him there. He's able to really pull you out wide, especially if you go down the line with the back end or inside in with the forehand. So you see I'm feeding Marcos um, a shot. He's going to go down the line and I'm going to try to just play pretty big uh, cross court. Because that's the shot that um, a shot that the new hits pretty well, and it's not gonna be perfect. We're not really like worry about it being perfect, um, but just try to repeat and train the eyes a little bit for that. flat there but his feet weren't moving that that well pay attention footwork really makes or breaks it here And right about now we have 20 something minutes of practice left. Uh, so it's time to play some points. We already volley, we already serve. Uh, so we're just gonna play some serving games here. Um, you may notice I'm, a bit, I'm on the other side now, but I'm pretty far back. I'm trying to give him the look that Daniel will give him um, from way far back. If anything else, <laughs> not far back enough. Um, having to adjust to that too, because um, it's, the courts are pretty big. When you're far back there, it feels like the net is so far away from you. 
but yeah, just trying to give him the look, you know, the visual that he's gonna get during the match. Serve and volley, that was something part of the game plan that he needed to serve and volley a little bit during that match, even if it's not necessarily in the comfort zone. With your opponent being back there like that. There, I hit a more aggressive second serve. We know the new likes to do that. And now you guys can see it. Look, I'm not even on frame. I'm pretty far back. <laughs> so just trying to return from very far back here. If anything, I could have gone a little bit more, I think, <laughs> after watching the match. Um, it's not a bad play, to be honest. It gives you a lot of time to pretty much just start the rally neutral, so. Definitely not easy to replicate um, the, the new Medvedev consistency. <laughs> Guy just really doesn't miss. So um, not necessarily that kind of player. I'm a bit more offensive. I was trying my best here. flying a little bit more. I'm playing with natural gut now on the crosses, uh, something that I've been thinking about doing for a while. 
Marcos has changed recently. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear a little bit more about that, about the natural gut. Uh, it's something that a lot of pro players use um, and I'm kind of experimenting right now on my setup. So let me know in the comments if you want to hear about natural gut. See how those balls really moved? That's that's a little bit of a natural gut. I didn't, I wasn't swinging that hard, but the gut does help with power, um, controlled power. But you also get those flyers. But yeah, right about here we're finishing practice, just last game. And yeah, again, the day, day before the match is not necessarily the, the toughest practice. It's just trying to stay fresh, uh, making sure everything's dialed in. Obviously, you know, we played a really tough opponent uh, in tough conditions and maybe not necessarily the, the right game plan. We always felt a little bit behind, but again, guys like Daniel make you wanna play outside of yourself, hitting too hard, um, and maybe taking too many risks. I, we didn't really want to want to do that. We wanted to uh, be able to stay with him during the match, but that also plays into his wheelhouse. So finding a balance between really offensive and and still stay within yourself, it's the hard part of playing a guy like Daniel. But we learn, we're here to learn, we're here uh, to every match take something away from it and we learn from this one and now uh, we're ready for dallas delray beach acapulco and the next tournament so thanks for watching this video hopefully hopefully it was informative and you guys enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys on the next video